So if you bump up to 177, we can look at another couple little examples. Um, here we're finding the, the center of mass of a system that, that is more um, two-dimensional as opposed to just being on a single, you know, kind of on the, just in the, along the x-axis, let's say. Um, so a thing to remember conceptually before you start is that if you were to just throw this whole mass into the air, it would rotate around the center of mass. And so that kind of might help you imagine where it would be. Well, this 40 kilo object is so much heavier than the others that before you even start, you know that center of mass is going to be pretty close to the 40 kilo thing. It's going to be, you know, way up here somewhere nearby. Um, so that helps you to kind of get your, you know, get your mindset before you start. Um, so let's just do it. Um, so it turns out it just goes like before. It's just that we're going to have an X center of mass and a Y center of mass. So if we, let's just, since we started with the X last time, let's do it again here. So the horizontal center of mass, if you want. Again, what you do is you take each position. Um, so for instance, position zero is worth two. And position one, that's worth 40. And position five, that is worth eight. Okay, so there's your numerator. And then the denominator, we have to divide by the total mass. So, well, two plus 40 plus eight. I'll just write it out for the first time here. Um, so divide by 50, I guess. And so what do we got? We have um, 40 plus 40. That makes 80 up there. 80 over uh, 50. Um, so what, eight fifths? That's uh, what, 1.6? 1 1.6. 1 so let's just see if that makes sense. If you go over allegedly, so there'd, there'd be like one and a half. 1.6 would be here-ish. So somewhere along this line is the, the is the horizontal center of mass. Okay. Well, let's do the same thing in the y direction. Um, you might even try pausing the video to uh, you know see if you can do the y direction. So let's get the y center of mass. Again, you take each position times how much mass is there. Um, so what you could do is you could say, well, position position zero. You could do it with three terms. You could say position zero is worth two and position zero is worth eight, or you could say position zero in the y direction is actually worth 10. So you can say, okay, position zero is worth 10. Why? Because there's 10 kilos at position zero. It doesn't matter that they're spread out this way because we're looking for the vertical center of mass. Um, and then position two is worth 40. And then divide by the total mass, divide by um, two plus 40 plus eight. And turns out we get um, 80 over 50 again. A um, little bit of a coincidence there, um, which is still 1.6. So it turns out if you go up 1.6, maybe here-ish. Okay, so our center of mass is like right there. So if you just chucked this whole mass into the air, um, it would actually rotate around the, that point, which is the center of mass. Um, again, something I did here that might have messed people up is, you know, you, if you went object by object, you'd say, well, position zero is worth two, position two is worth 40, and position zero is worth eight. So that effectively is the same as saying position zero is worth 10. Okay, so, um, so that's why I only had two terms here. So um, just another look at how you can find center mass of kind of a more 2D-ish um, object.